nowhere else but here in America or a third world country. There's something about why the right wants America to be like a third world country. They, they believe in, in a death penalty, that everybody should have a gun, and uh, just some of the stuff about such harsh, you know, harsh way of, of, of dealing with things. Um, the argument that uh, if we take guns away, then uh, people will only like kill using swords and knives and slingshots and bricks. And uh, we'll face it, guns are the most efficient way of killing people. If, if other, if bricks were as efficient, then our army would carry bricks. Bombers would drop bricks from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just see it now? <laughs> Send in our men with swords like it's the Middle Ages or something? No, because we have guns. It's the most efficient way of killing. There was a case, was it in China, that some guy went into a school and hacked up a bunch of kids. Yeah, you're not going to stop people from killing each other. But we can make it a lot less efficient. Um... You know, when a man is like held up in a house and the SWAT team is coming and the guy is armed to the teeth, just give him knives and swords. Remember that Indiana Jones thing where he says, what a, you know, huh, brings a knife to a gunfight. Because there's no, there's just no equal. Okay? God, what a ridiculous argument. Oh, I want to thank Boba McGraw for sending me the, uh, I know it took me long enough, but I finally finished the Stephen Fry. I was going to look for it if it was handy. Oh, hold on a sec. I'll go grab it. I finished it. I take it to the park with me, and I finished it the other day, but somehow I just can't get my hands on it right now. Oh, I promise you I didn't lose it. Oh, here it is. Stephen Fry's Moab is my wash pot, <laughs> which just doesn't... I've, I read the whole book and I didn't quite figure it out. I mean, his wash pot, I don't know why he says Moab, but uh, maybe I should look up the word Moab. Maybe that'll help. Maybe that'll be a clue. But uh, he talks about just the cleaning, the muck of his life near the end of it. And uh, Stephen Fry is one of my heroes. I find him, I find him very, very interesting. Uh, I, had, I found his early part of his childhood very interesting. His, his father was an inventor. Some, like some kind of genius. And his mother was no, was no uh, uh, idiot either. And um, he had a brother, an older brother, and a, young, and a, and a young, younger sister. So the whole part, and over there, what, what they call middle class is probably, uh, seems probably better off than what we consider the middle class. Americans have a funny thing about middle class, is that people that shop at Walmart and can't afford to go anywhere else, consider themselves middle class. I don't know. And then we have upper middle class here. So I guess upper middle class in the United States would be the same as what Eng the English would call middle class. Um, any of my British friends want to correct me on that because I could be wrong. I mean, I didn't grow up there. But anyway, the, the educational system I found very interesting. What we call private schools, uh, boarding, boarding schools. Stephen Fry was sent off there. Over there they call them public schools because they are... It's the public that's footing the bill, I guess. <laughs> it's not part of the system, you know, dividing government and public, okay? Because they're not government-funded uh, schools, like where the poor people would go. And the whole, the whole system is just, is, is what made the British, uh, their whole upper class, the whole like ruling part. I mean, it's tra tradition. And those are the people that are going to be, you know, the, the kids that go to that, through that school system are going to be the, the doctors and lawyers and the, uh, and the members of parliament, etc. We sort of have a class system here in the United States, but we, we choose to ignore it. Over there, it's, it's much more defined. We would still like to live with the notion, and it's true. Bill Clinton came from humble uh, uh, beginnings, and so did Barack Obama, and you know, grew up to be president. 
Whereas somebody like Mitt Romney or George W. Bush or George H. Bush, um, they pretty much, their families had money going way back. Uh, well, I don't know about Mitt Romney. I don't know how far back his fortune goes, but he was definitely born with a silver spoon in his mouth. But that's all over with. Mitt Romney destined to be a footnote in, in American history. So, uh, there was the, the part where Stephen Fry, and Stephen Fry is a, is a homosexual and a Jew, and the whole uh, part is Jewish. Does it say and a Jew? Does that sound, does that sound derogatory or racist? Um, he's Jewish, and um, uh, so the whole, like, his, his awakening to, and this crush on this other kid in his school, um, I read all that, but I, admittedly it wasn't my favorite part of the book. So the beginning was really interesting to me, and then the whole, the whole growing up period, he does mention, like he was friends with Hugh Laurie, I mean, and they worked together, and uh, definitely like Fry and Laurie, man, they were like a team, and um but later, the, during the whole book, Stephen Fry is a thief. He would steal from the other kids, go through their pockets when the coats are hung up, uh, just steal whenever he had a chance. And he didn't really need to because, you know, it was like a compulsion or something. And uh, he ended up getting kicked out of school and kind of hitting the road and ended up in jail. And uh, after that, somehow turned his life around. Because yeah, I think he had a good safety net there. I think his parents really still loved him and, and were willing to take him back and, and do whatever. So he went back to school and, and finished his education. And uh, now he's the, the great person we know now. He doesn't come right out and mention it, but he talks about it in other places. Is that some of the things that was going on with him is because he was bipolar. And uh, the whole, like going on this, on this adventure, this, this you know, uh, copying credit cards and, and spending them and pretending to be somebody else uh, was all part of the, I mean, first he went into, a, a, uh, first there was a deep depression when he was still in school, he tried to kill himself. And then later there's the high where he's like out on the country on an adventure until he ended up in jail. So anyway, I thoroughly enjoyed the book. Thank you, thank you, Bobo McGraw, for sending this to me. Thomas, excuse me. I have to go off camera and wipe my nose a little bit here. No, that's better. So, I um, guess that's about it. I don't really have a whole lot to say. Um, let me try to do some other stuff. Uh, um, I'm going to be using some other channels, and they can take the copyright infringement hit. That's fine. Um, but I still think I still think I need to say something. <laughs> I need to rub this person's nose in it. You are such a hypocrite. All right, everybody. Uh, usually I say have a great week, but I'll say Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. I doubt I'll be posting a Fez night for a while. I'm on my holiday break. All right, everybody. Happy holidays. Cheers.